Okay, first of all, I, I got to ask you about the uh, the LeBron James story. Uh, just how cool was that? Set this up for our listening audience. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was amazing. It was my first uh, time having the Lakers, first time meeting LeBron and getting to referee him. And, um, you know, I walk out onto the floor with the basketballs. I was going to have him check it to pick the ball. You know, we have to have a game ball and a backup. And, you know, he comes straight up to me, sticks his hand out, and he's like, Le uh, hey, Natalie, LeBron James, welcome to the league. We're so glad to have you. And so I was like, whoa, you know, like he knew my name before I could tell him my name. And, you know, it was just really neat to uh, have that moment with him. And I mean, it, he was just very professional and classy about it because, you know, obviously I've known him, you know, being a basketball fan, growing up watching him. So it was just really, you know, really neat. Are there ever awe moments for you where you say to yourself, man, I can't believe I'm calling a foul on Steph Curry, or I can't believe I just called the technical on Kevin Durant. Yeah, you know, um, just in my first couple games, even still now in my third year, I'm running up and down the floor and, you know, I'm just like, wow, like this is my job, you know, like it's, it's pretty amazing. And, you know, we're out there running around with the top athletes in the world and, you know, it's, it's just cool. You got to have thick skin. I know you can't mention names, but tell me like the meanest thing you've ever heard from a coach or a player. What have you heard? Uh, you know, it's not really like mean. It's just like in the moment, passionate, you know, like that's a bullshit call or, you know, something like, I mean, I don't take that. We don't take that to heart because it's just part of it. You know, I mean, we are very passionate about our jobs and they are very passionate about theirs. So we get it. It's part of the game. I mean, you hear more crazy stuff from the fans, but we don't, I mean, we don't pay any attention to them. So, um, but really it's not, it's not as like awful as, as the, you know, just regular viewer might think. Yeah. I, I want to ask you too about your meteoric rise, because I don't know if anybody went from, this point to this point as quickly as you, what do you think puts you over the top? Why are you the one selected to do this? You know, I just, I just truly believe that it's, you know, hard work and I'm just a sponge. I'm a student of the game. I'm very passionate and I love, you know, I watched my dad do this growing up. And so like, I always watched how he carried himself and how him and his buddies handled themselves on the floor. And you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of a nerd. Like I love watching games. I just watch so much film, you know, on myself to get better. And that's what we do as a staff. We watch film to get better. And um, I'm just, I just love it. And I, I'm a listener. You know, you gotta be, you gotta be a good listener. You gotta be willing to make mistakes, to learn from them. And that's just how you grow and you get better. And I think honestly, just all that hard work is, you know, just come to the forefront. And now I'm here. Have you ever said to a coach or a referee during a game, you know what? I blew that one. I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, you get the, you get to say that once every now and then, you know, because we're all human and we're going to make mistakes. And, you know, we, to be an NBA referee, to be a referee at any level, to be honest, you're never going to be perfect. And if you strive to be perfect, you're not going to last very long in this, in this business, because there's no, I mean, there's no way you're going to go out and call a perfect game. There's just no way. And again, like I said earlier, you learn from your mistakes and you put it in your memory bank and then, you know, you, it won't happen again, probably. And if it does happen again, you know how to handle it. So um, it's just, it's like I said, it's very challenging and it's so much fun. How about your a most electrifying moment where you felt most alive in an NBA game what teams were playing why was it just unbelievable for you you know it was probably uh in Toronto um in my second year it was Toronto Houston at Toronto you know James Harden um and then like Kyle Lowry and Serge Ibaka and just that big the Toronto team you know they were the the reigning 
champions and um I mean that place is electric every night and when we can have fans Toronto is a fantastic arena I mean it's so loud you can barely hear your whistle and it was on tv it was on NBA tv and I mean we had a heck of a game and it just came down to the wire and I had some pretty big block charge plays and I mean it's it was just I was like all right I'm I'm feeling it you know and the the fans make the atmosphere and that's just that's what we're missing right now and I can't wait to get fans back into the stadium or in the arenas because I mean they make the atmosphere the 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 loudness and just the cheering and you know when teams go on a run it just it makes it so much fun and so I think that was kind of like my my moment like I was like wow this place is rocking right now you know (laughs) I know you have to have thick skin to be a really good official, but I'm wondering if you heard it from a player, a coach, or a fan where they're getting on you, where you almost were amused at how witty the nasty remark was, and it kind of stayed with you. And do you remember who may have said it? Uh, No, I mean, we hear crazy (laughs) things from fans all the time. I mean, What would you hear? uh, I mean, there's been a few few comments like – go back to the WNBA or, you know, which is, I mean, that's the WNBA is tough. I mean, those <laughs> girl, those women can play. I mean, so it's just, you know, the fans, they just don't, they don't really, they don't get it. They don't know what we do. And so you just can't pay any attention to them. How about um, when you go back to Farmington, you played on that final four team. Are you still close yeah. with the girls on that team? And I bet they're just so thrilled and they're, they're enjoying this experience with you. Oh yeah, there's, I mean, pretty much all of us, we still stay in touch, you know, every now and then we have a, we have a group message and, you know, uh, one of my best friends, she's actually a head JUCO, the head JUCO basketball coach at Mineral Area College. And this is her first year as a head coach. And she actually just got her first win the other night as a head coach. And so I'm super pumped and proud of her, you know, another, another female coach leading the way. And, um, So, yeah, we always stay in touch. We're all pretty close. I've gotten a lot of messages from all of my old teammates, you know, this week. So we had a pretty special team in 2007. Now, does any NBA player know that you were a star shooting guard on a Final Four team in Farmington? Did they ever make a remark? You know, I don't know if they know that, but I mean, sometimes like during warmups and stuff, like when we're checking the balls to see what game ball they want and all that, they'll come up and be like, Nat, I bet you were a shooter. I bet you were lights out, you know, stuff like that. So we talk hoops, you know, during warmups and stuff, or like if it, there's a dead ball and, you know, we're waiting for a clock fix or something like that. Uh, a little side conversation happens every once in a while. So I know via the NBA rules, you're not really allowed to say anything about individual players, but I'll ask a real innocent question. Uh, what player is exceedingly polite to you? Gosh, you know, uh, to be honest, there are so many, there's so many good guys in our league. I know the media and, you know, stuff, you know, makes some nights makes them look like they're bad guys, but really we have a lot of good guys in our league. And so, I mean, I can't really pick one out to say the least, but I mean, there's several that we have many of good guys in our league. All right, you're out there with some huge men. What about a collision with one of them? You've had to have run into one of them. Yeah, you know, last year, one of the guys, uh, Phoenix was playing at Charlotte, and uh, Kelly Oubre Jr. was running out of bounds on the sideline to save a ball. And I just happened to be right there, and I saw him coming at me, but there was nothing I could do. So I just kind of braced up, and he – he ran, he kind of ran into me and just grabbed me. And we just went down into the front <laughs> row uh, with the people sitting in the front row. So, I mean, you know, obviously it was nothing intentional. It's part of the game. And, you know, I had a little beer spilt on me, but just wiped it up and we just kept on moving. <laughs> well, since you're so young, I think you're 31 years old. You could do this yeah. for the next 20 years of your life, couldn't you? Oh, yeah. I mean, we have, we have uh, one of our veterans on staff. He is in his 36th year. And so, I mean, really, as long as our body holds up and as long as you want to you want to pursue it and you're, you know, you're on the right track and you're doing the right things. I mean, you could do this job for 20, 30 years if you want. 
and I imagine you're in the best shape of your life. You're in better shape now than when you were playing softball jury, correct? You have to be. Yeah, I would say. I mean, there's a lot more cardio involved, you know? I mean, we're running up and down the floor with the best athletes in the world, so we have to be in tip-top shape. And, you know, that's one of our standards and one of the things we get graded on every season. And, you know, we have weigh-ins three times a season. And, you know, during our yearly, we have our preseason yearly physicals that we have to do. So, yeah, I mean, off season is big. We got to stay, stay in shape. We got to keep our bodies right. And, you know, eating well is another huge part of it. And so, yeah, you just got to, you got to do the right things and keep your body right. Or man, you're going to, you get worn down because we go about five to six miles every night. And finally, what kind of contact do you have with players? What is it allowed to off the court? Like if you're at a restaurant can they come sit at your table and have dinner? Can they try to buy you a beer or what? No. Um, you know, used to when we could be in the hotel restaurant or hotel bar, like we, if they come up and want to say, hi, how you doing? Whatever. We're allowed to, you know, shake their hand or whatever it is and say, Hey, and just keep it moving. Um, you know, we're not allowed to interact or hang out per se with the coaches and players. Um, and, you know, right now with all the COVID restrictions and guidelines, we're not even allowed to leave our rooms unless we're going to the game or going to get tested. Finally, just sum up uh, your life right now. <laughs> um, I'm very blessed. You know, I, I have a great family that's very supportive. Um, you know, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't even I wouldn't be here today, you know, doing this job. Um, it's just pretty incredible. I mean, I, I can't really put it into words. Um, I'm just going to keep working hard and make them proud.